before I start, I'd like to invite everybody that watches on television to come visit with us here in Edgerly at Antioch, 1030 Sunday morning. You are more than welcome, and thank you for watching us. This morning we're going to begin in Hebrews 10, 25. Let's stand for the reading of God's Word. Hebrews 10, to it, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another in so much more as you see the day approaching. Father in heaven, we ask you to speak to us today that, Lord, you teach us about the devil and how to, to fight against him and have victory, this old world, how to overcome it, and help us, Lord, to learn the word and to listen and be attentive to your word. Bless us all now in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody be seated. You know, Jesus says in the last days, as you can see the day approaching, and man, right now you can see the day approaching. It's getting worse and worse. He says, don't blow off going to church. Go to church because right now that's one of the most important things that a Christian has to work with. That's one of our most important tools that God has given us. But you know, today I want to talk about something a little different. It's one thing to come to church, but it's another thing to get something out of it. So many people come to church and they sit there and they daydream. And that's terrible. You know, the Bible says in Matthew 15, 8, This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth. They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And I see a lot of that today. People want to go to these churches that all oh, they sing themselves into a feel-good trance. Oh, their lips and their tongues are all worshiping God. But when that pastor starts reading the scriptures, that's when they start daydreaming. They start thinking about something else, and they don't hear the word of God. You know, I know when I was a child in school, now they call that ADD. But I had a problem with daydreaming. You hear me? Look, y'all, I can remember in the second grade sitting there one morning, and boy, it was real overcast outside, and I looked out the window sitting at my little desk, and I thought, boy, if me and Daddy was in that canoe right now down at the burnout bridge, we could be tearing them bass up. And y'all, in about two minutes, I, that was the best fishing trip I ever had. <laughs> I was far, far away from that second grade class. Believe you me, my brain was out there in the marsh. I was good at that. But uh, church is not the place to do it. Listen and pay attention because it's so important. You know... I know there are a lot of people, they just are not interested in the Bible. But I'm going to tell you what somebody, I, I used to work with this, he was a bodybuilder. The guy was actually a real bodybuilder. And he would eat stuff like Brussels sprouts and black bean sauce. And, and I never ate that kind of stuff. And one day I said something to him about eating that all the time. And he said, you know what, man? He said, when you eat this food, if you think about how nutritionist, how nutritionist it is for your body, and how it's healing things, and it's helping you to grow and build, it makes it psychologically taste good. And I said, really? He said, man, I'm telling you, get you some spinach. And while you're eating that, don't think about it's green and what it tastes like. Think about what it's doing to your heart and your blood. And I started doing that, and now today I am a vegetable no man. Folks, I'm here to tell, to tell you, if you only knew how healthy this is, you'd be listening like this. Because everything the Word of God teaches us is so nutritious, spiritually speaking, that we are anemic if we're not getting a, a full diet every time we come in here. And you know what? I want to serve God with my heart, with my mind, not just singing hymns with my mouth. But you know, Jesus told a story in the Bible in Matthew 13, 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now you've got to understand, when Jesus was talking to lost people, he would use something like a flower or a weed or something that they could relate to because they couldn't relate to spiritual matters. They didn't have the Spirit of God in them. So he always brought it back to nature, something tangible we could touch, smell it, look at it. And in this case, he uses a man planting seeds. Well... And when he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Well, you know, the guy's going to the, to the garden. He's got a little hole in the sack. And there's a few seeds falling out. Well, the crows is getting them just as fast as they hit the ground. And then when he gets there, he gets a handful. Some fall by his feet. But the, and the birds is eating them. They're getting eaten up. They're being wasted. 
Well, listen. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and full with they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. Man, they popped right up because the dirt wasn't deep. They was already growing in about two days, but because they had no root, they withered away. Well, this Bible tells us that as you have received Christ in Colossians 2 6, Jesus the Lord so walk you in him. The way you got saved, you remember how fired up you were when you first got saved? Stay that way. You know when you were looking for God and you finally found him and the relief it brought because you knew you wasn't going to hell no more? We need to still have that confidence. And when you first got saved, how you prayed about everything? Well, it don't seem like we pray that much anymore. We need to get back to that. Like this says, the way you met Jesus, stay with him that way. And you know what? When the sun comes up and scorches you, well, you want to work because your roots will be deep in this earth and they'll have plenty of nutrition. Well, as we go on, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith as you have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Folks, you need to be rooted in Jesus, not in the Baptist church, not in the singing and going to a trance. You need to be rooted up in Jesus Christ where he's the most important thing in your life. You need to look forward to coming to Sunday school and to church on Sunday morning. That ought to be the highlight of your week. And when you leave this church, you ought to say, gee whiz, it's already over. Instead of, man, is he going to keep on preaching? No. Have patience. Realize how much good it's doing you. And when you think about it that way, you'll want more of it. Amen. Well, then, then yet some of them seeds fell in the thorns, and, well, the thorns sprung up and they choked them. You know nothing grows in a thorn bed. But others fell in the good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirtyfold. All plants are different. You might plant a row of tomatoes, and one of them only have two tomatoes, and that one on the other end might have twelve. That's just how it is, you know. But, folks, listen good. In 13.9 of Matthew, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Folks, <clears throat> this is so important to you and I as Christians because what do we do when we come here on Sunday morning? Sure, we sing a hymn. Sure, we give prayer requests. But our main objective today is to open the Word of God and to listen to the Scriptures and see what power they have for us today, what victory we're about to win, and how to go through life without being steadily beat down and stomped on by the devil. We're here today to give you the tools, the ammunition, the weapon to fight Satan. And you know what it is? It's the Bible. 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and instruction in righteousness. This book before me has got the secrets of to the success of life. Now, folks, you come here on Sunday morning and you listen and you pay attention. Forget about the fishing trip. Forget about everything. Let this word sink down in your heart and it will teach you how to be a success in life. And I want to be a victor, not a loser. Amen? And you know what Jesus says about you today? See, you folks, I'm kind of preaching to the choir today because most of you all listen pretty good. I can tell by your faces when I'm preaching. And this is what Jesus says to you. But blessed are your eyes, for they see. And your ears, for they hear. Now, Joe, I know your eyes don't see physically, but your spiritual eyes do. And you hear what I'm saying, and you digest what I'm saying, and spiritually you're being just lifted up with power and authority. And that's what this is talking about. You know, it says right before you got eyes, but you don't see. A lot of people got 20-20 vision, but they're not seeing God. A lot of people can hear just fine, but they're not hearing the Word. And folks, according to the Word of God today, you're blessed. Because you come here when I'm preaching, you're listening. And you got an interest in what we're talking about. Because you have an interest in God. And it's going to benefit you all the days of your life as well as your offspring and your children. Hear therefore the parable of the sower. Now Jesus explains to the apostles why he did it that way. He said, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth it away, which is sown in his heart. That is he 
which receiveth the seed by the wayside. Some people sit in this church and I'll throw them seeds of the gospel out there, but they're thinking about, ooh, man, is that, pre- is that slow roaster? I hope it didn't run out of water. I hope there's still some gravy in it. If he don't quit preaching, the beans are going to be burning. You know, they're thinking about, the, that's the devil snatching the word away from you. Or you might be sitting there and I'm preaching you the word and you're sitting, oh, I dread going to work tomorrow. I'd rather be beat with a horse whip. Folks, put all that out of your mind. Come in here and sit down and listen to the word of God and feast on it like a good meal, like a big bowl of Brussels sprouts. Amen? That sounded appetizing, didn't it? Well, I'll tell you what. They're good for you. They're, they're really healthy little things to eat. Well, listen. You know what the Bible says in John 8, 32? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. That's why the devil fights so hard for you not to know the truth. He knows you're a good person. He knows you got a good heart. But if he can hide the truth from you, well, then you won't know if you're doing right or wrong or what to do. Amen? That's why he wants you to daydream while we're administering the word. Again, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Matthew 13, 20. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same he heareth the word, and with Annan, with joy, he receiveth. You know what? A lot of people come to church and they like it because they've got friends for a change. And man, you're not going to find better friends than the ones you find in church because these folks will love you. They won't just honky tonk with you, they won't just let you buy the beer. They'll actually love you and they'll pray for you when you're in trouble. This is the best friends you can have. But you know what? A lot of people come to church, they make friends, they love it. They like the feeling of doing the right thing. It feels good. It feels good to get up and come to God's house and to say you're a Christian. But you know what? If they don't have the deepness of root, it don't last. Oh, they spring up quickly. They're all into it. But listen, listen. Yet hath not root in himself, but endureth for a little while, when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. Folks, I just don't know about that. I don't know how anybody could find Jesus and throw him to the side later on. He's the greatest thing I've ever found. And every day I have to ask myself, how did I live before I had Christ in my heart? I, well, I know I was a miserable wretch. But now that I have God in my life and in my heart and I've got a church family, I cannot imagine it being any other way. But yet, there are people that will come to church, get all excited, get all in it, and then somebody offend them with some little something that don't mean nothing, and they're gone. And God is no longer part of their life because they didn't get rooted. I'm here to tell you and myself as well, if you're not reading your Bible, if you don't have a prayer life, if you don't have a real relationship with Jesus, you're not going to hold up because this world and that devil will see to it. Something offends you, some little petty nothing will change your whole walk with God. I'm going to read it again. But he that receiveth the seed in a stony place, the same is he that heareth the word, and with Anna and joy receiveth, yet hath not root in himself, but dureth for a while in tribulation, persecution arises because of the word. By and by, he is offended. Folks, I hope you would never leave this church because you got angry over something. I've had so many people leave here for the silliest nothings. I mean, I meet a lot of them over the years. And I wonder when they stand before God and God says, why'd you quit on your church? Everybody loved you there. and Why'd you give up on that? Well, somebody made me mad. That's not going to hold up real well. First of all, and don't take this wrong, I don't come here because of you. I come here because of God. And ain't nothing you're going to do to make me mad enough to make me quit on God. And if I was coming here because of you and I want to impress you, that might be different. Make me mad, I might quit. But, folks, I'm here for the Lord. And the only way you're not going to see me here next Sunday is unless I'm with the Lord or I'm sick or something. I'm not going to give up on God. But you know what? Some in 13, 7 of Matthew fell in the thorns and the thorns sprung up and they choked them. You know, folks, I'll tell you, it's hard nowadays in this world. I really feel sorry for our young people because everything. I, I was at a birthday party yesterday and these children were watching a Disney 
movie cartoon thing. And folks, it couldn't have been more demonic and satanic as if I'd have been sitting in a satanic church. I could not get over that. The name of the production company was Fallen Angel. Just start right off. Well, who would that be? And it was just nothing but demonic. I mean, demon. Who's a dragon? Oh, that's the devil in the Bible. That's right. But you know what? Our young people, they got it coming from every direction. Teachers are teaching them all kinds of stuff today in a lot of the schools. I'll tell you, folks, it's sad. But us adults, I see so many today they're trying to keep up with the Joneses. You know, folks, you can work your life away, and you can die with a million dollars in the bank and die miserable. And I've seen it. I've seen it. You know, we, me and the wife, we owned a little hot shot company, and we made quite a bit of money with that. But I got worried about her on that highway all the time because that was her business, and we stopped it. And I'm going to tell you something. We don't go without nothing, and we ain't changed our life one solid bit. You know that? Now I've got her home and safe on a rainy night or sometime when there's sleeting, and our money ain't changed. God provides for us. We're eating the same. We're going the same. We're doing the same. Electricity's on at the house. You know, life is short. If you're chasing that dollar bill, your life will be over with in a minute, and you're going to realize that you missed the important things in life. I've seen this so many times. It's just heartbreaking because I've seen it, and it's sad. But don't let the world choke your word. Grow up and be a plant for Jesus. Had just so many tomatoes, he don't know which one to pick. Listen, others fell in good ground and brought forth fruit. Hey, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirty. Folks, you know something? We're not all the same. We're not all the same because we, we were different in the way we serve God and the fruit that we make. And, you know, we need to realize that, that we cannot all be preachers. We can't all be Sunday school teachers. We can't all be musicians. But I've said this a million times. You can be here on Sunday morning. And I don't think you realize the importance that is to God. That's like God smelling a rose when you come to church. You might thought, oh, just me. What difference is little old me going to make? Folks, little old you makes a lot of difference because you don't understand how much God loves you. How when he sees your smile and face come through that door right there, you make God's day because you came to see him to start your week. That's not a small thing. That's a big thing. Well, Matthew 13, 9, he has the ears to hear. Let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And folks, it's so true. Again, uh, this scripture, I'm going to skip this second one here. I don't know what it is. I messed up on that. But you know what? Let's jump back down, down here. Um, in Luke 9, 23, yeah, that's what I did. I messed up, y'all. I'm sorry about that. He said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You see, folks, if you don't want to be offended and quit on God, then move yourself out of the way. Because, you know, being a pastor, I learned this years ago. If you're going to be a minister for God, <laughs> you better learn to move yourself out of the way. And I mean, that goes, that goes a long ways because you, you just don't know how cruel people can be. You know, they'll call you after a sermon and tell you how rotten it was and how you ought not be a preacher. They'll call you the next day and tell you you ought not be singing because your singing is atrocious. These things really lift you in spirit, you know. Or they borrow $1,000 from the pastor and they never pay it back. And, you know, things like this go on, but you've got to move yourself out of the way and continue to remind yourself what I said a while ago. We're not in this to please each other. You and I are in this for God. Amen. And we just want a closer walk with Him. And no matter what the world does or what people do, or even the people that you dearly love, they're going to hurt you. But you just go ahead and you take it because we're working for God. Deny yourself. Take up your cross and follow me. Folks, that's how it's got to be. Matthew 13, 22. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. They choke the word and becomes unfruitful. Again, we can get so caught up with our sports and we've all got kids and grandkids involved in sports. 
We could get so caught up when hunting season rolls around, chasing them poor little squirrels, trying to murder them. What did they do? Well, they make a good brown gravy. That's what they do. But you know what? We get so caught up in the spring when the fish are biting and they're spawning. Sometimes we kind of put God on the back burner. Don't let that happen. Stay fired up and understand that church on Sunday morning is the utmost important for your Christian walk. It's part of your Christian diet, and we need to be feeding upon Christ every Sunday morning. Well, I know a lot of people, they're ashamed of Jesus because their friends make fun of him. And I know that today in this world, Jesus is not really a popular thing anymore. I notice on a lot of commercials, and I know you don't notice this because I'm watching for it, but I see a lot of commercials where they're praying to Buddha or they're praying to Jesus. That's funny, isn't it? They uplift Buddha and they're Confucius and Muhammad and Allah, but you never see none of them uplifting Jesus Christ. And folks, don't let that choke you. You be what you are. You be who you are for Jesus. This world is going to hell in a handbasket. It's just like right now. We've got a president that claims to be a Christian man, and he's trying to do good things. The movie stars hate him. The athletes hate him. The news media hates him. Half of Congress hates him. The list goes on and on. You know why? Because he's on the right side. That's why. And you know, folks, you and I fall into that category too. And we have to be so careful because this world will try to make you ashamed to be a Christian. Don't do that. Because let me read to you what Jesus says about it. Luke 9, 26, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and his Father's and the holy angels. Folks, let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is coming back. Oh, I know a lot of people don't believe that, but the Bible says it and I believe it. But when he comes back, he's not going to be the little shepherd boy with his sandals riding on a little burrow. He's going to be the king of kings and the lord of lords with fire coming out of his eyes, riding a giant white horse. And he's going to have the glory of God with him and the glory of the angels. You don't want to say, I was ashamed of you. No, you want God to say, hey, you, you come stand by me. You've always been by my side. You're on the team. I want to be on that winning team with the white horse and the two-edged sword. I don't want to be ashamed of Jesus now and pay for it later. Folks, people don't realize. Stand up for the winning team. Be on the winning team because we're just about to reach the goalpost here. And if you lagging behind or if you're just an old water boy you're going to regret it folks we need to be playing hard right now we need to be working hard for Jesus because he's coming back soon but he that receiveth that old seed in the good ground and he hears the word and he understands it which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundred some sixty some thirty folks that is where I want to be when I walk up to them pearly gates, I want God to look at me and say, man, you bore so much fruit. I am proud of you. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Now, well, I'll tell you something, folks. Something when he calls it heaven, but it's a whole nother thing when he says, enter into the joy, the eternal joy, a life of eternal happiness and bliss that's never going to end. You're never going to get tired. You're never going to get sleepy. You're never going to have one problem ever again throughout the eons of time. Enter to the joy of God Almighty. Let me read something to you. His Lord said unto him in verse 23, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. You know what? God give us just a little bit of something here to work with. But if you utilized it and you've accepted that eternal life and the ministry he's called you to, again, whether it's to be a prayer warrior or to have your spot on that pew absorbing the word every Sunday, whatever God's called you to do it, do it the best you can. And that's what he's going to say to you one day. And folks, when you come to church, you ought to walk through the doors with that attitude. 
like you're like that bodybuilder going to a big old plate of mustard greens. Amen. You are to come in here, and even though it don't appeal to the world, this don't appeal to the world, but it does to you because you understand what you're getting from it. And this is how you are to enter the back door. Psalms 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and be thankful unto him and bless his name. Folks, do you know how much we've got to be thankful for? Sometimes you ought to just sit down. You know, I've done that, and you know you can't name everything that we ought to be thankful for. You just can't remember them all. You say, when I go for my walk in the morning, I take... I walk a mile, it takes me about four hours. So I got plenty of time to pray. And uh, that's a joke, y'all. It really don't. About 30 minutes, I'm done. I just thought I'd make a... funny there but you know I, I i try to thank god for everything he's done and when i think that when i say the last thing oh oh and also thank you for healing me last week when i was sick oh yeah and thank you for it just don't end you can never finish thanking god for what he's done for us and folks we ought to never finish we ought to always thank god come to church that's the best way you can thank him the Bible teaches us this is how you show your appreciation. You open that hymnal and you praise him in song. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much today. That Lord, you not only give us church and you give us a Bible and you give us your word, but you teach us how to receive it to where it will work for us. Father, just help us to be hungry for your word. And if people today, maybe they're here or maybe they're somewhere else that don't enjoy your word like they should. Help them to realize the spiritual nutrition that is involved. That, Lord God, you are the answer to every problem we've ever had, will have. Lord, you are our blessing. Thank you for hearing us today. Thank you for teaching us. We're so privileged. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.